and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guest is Mr. George Bug III. He's the president and founder of Community Choices, Opportunity, Mentoring, Maturity through Unity. How you doing, Mr. Bug? I'm doing well, Mr. Brown. How are you doing? Great, great. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, my name is George Bug III. I'm originally from Edgefield, South Carolina. Recently just relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've been working with youth since 2007. I've served in all areas as far as residential, community, uh, inside the educational setting, uh, education, basically just serving as a counselor and transitioning them from high education to, from transitioning from high school to high education. Your program, community, tell the audience a little bit about that. Community, choices, opportunities, mentoring, maturity through unity. Basically serve as an online platform for parents, youth, professionals, organizations. They can all come together to one one-stop shop online and locate whatever resources they may be in need of in their local areas. Uh, for instance, you can come and find out where to get a local mentor for your child. Come in and, and find out what's the local job fair that's coming or a networking event also in your area. And also, maybe your child will be in need of tutoring, scholarships. We also have all that available online on the website. So you can come to a one-stop shop and be able to locate that or come in contact with those who will be able to give you that information. Hmm, that's great. How long have you been in, you know, how long has your program been in non-existence? Uh, we've been up and running officially for about six months okay. now. We originally started in Columbia, South Carolina, working with that local area, because as I mentioned, that's where I was an educator and counselor at. So we originally started the program and the website and making those connections inside the area. Uh, we've been up and running recently in Charlotte for the past three months. So Columbia may be a little more foundational than Charlotte, but we're continuing to make those connections throughout the community to make sure that the website is effective and also up to date as far as what's available throughout the community. What impact do you to want to do a program like that? Well, as I mentioned, I've been working with youth quite some time, and you know, come working with the youth also come with the parents or the guardians. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've noticed, especially when you have the single parent households, or maybe a, a grandmother is taking over custody of a child, um, they're not so as far as aware of what's available inside of the area to help them or assist them in whatever need they may have. So if you have that child that's in, in school and he may not be doing so well, and that can be behavior, that can be academically, whatever the incident may be, they won't necessarily know how to go about getting those resources or assistance that they may need if the school doesn't have it available. Or if the school doesn't know where to direct them to get those services, they're pretty much just out on the limb without any help. And um, if the counselor in the school, or if they don't necessarily know anyone in the neighborhood that can contact with someone to give them that assistance, then the child is going uh, unassisted, as well as the parent is feeling helpless because they don't know where to go. Okay. Um, you have those that are moving in from out of town, may have a, a, a child of special needs. They don't necessarily know where to go to to get the resources that may be available for that child. So seeing that gap, um, I knew it was something that could be done because being an educator, I'm also well connected inside the community. I meet several individuals that's doing several different things in different areas all the time, okay. but so far as bringing us together, unless someone's throwing a networking event that unnecessarily, and unfortunately, parents don't always attend, especially our youth, you don't necessarily know what's going on. And there's so many people doing great things in their community, we just have to make the connection for people that they're trying to serve to their services. And I think, well, I know that community could be able to serve as that platform, and therefore community was established. Mm. So what motivates George to do the things you do for our community? Well, to be honest, man, I come from a small country town. I was fortunate enough to be raised with my mom and my dad, and I also had my grandparents right next door. So I had a great support team, great support team. And um, my community was very, very small and tight-knitted. Everybody knew everyone. Everybody knew my father. So even if he didn't see something, right. someone who did saw it would be able to go back and tell him, and I would still be held accountable for my actions. And I know that that helped me come to the man that I've become today um, as a professional, and that's also just as an individual man. So I strongly believe in that it takes a village to raise a child. Um, no one person can do it alone. And also, you may, no one knows all the answers to the questions. There's no direct script of how to run to, or how to parent a child, how to live your life, or just how to be successful. 
So you can commute with someone or communicate with someone that's doing the right thing or maybe working for them, share information. Also serves that platform. What's, what's, what are you doing that's working for you that may also be able to work for me? What, what methods are you taking with your child that I may also be able to effective with my child? And um, that's one thing that motivates me, man, because it worked for me as a child, raising up in that community, having so many people coming from so many different areas, giving me directives, giving me words of wisdom, giving me advice, and just helping me grow into an individual man to be able to make my own individual decisions as far as where I'm going. And community also, that's why I established that to service that platform. Why is lack of knowledge so visible in our youth and in some, and a lot of the parents? Lack of knowledge, I mean. Well, it's kind of like a chain. Um, it just continue to grow. People teach what they know, all right? If you've never been exposed to that type of information or that type of environment, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to deliver that information to your child. You teach them what you know. You teach them what you've learned. And if you've never been in that environment to learn that information, it's very difficult for you to be able to relay that information to someone that you're upbringing. So if I'm a parent inside of a household, Maybe I've never experienced a child that's, that's going through the certain uh, uh, modes and different things that they're experiencing as a teenager. Especially, that's why they say sometimes that a mother can't raise a man because she's never been exposed to that type of things that we go through as a man from a teenager raising it to a man. So it's very difficult for you to be able to understand what that teenager is going through and then as vice versa with a, a dad with a daughter. You don't necessarily know what that young lady's going through. And to be able to understand her, to be able to effectively communicate with her and do it, help her go through and assist her understand that, you got to understand what she's going through, understand what she's feeling, understand what she's thinking in order to be able to effectively help her. And if you don't know how to comprehend, if you don't know how to comprehend that, then it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to assist that child. So to answer your question, those, we are limited to what we know. And if we don't expand ourselves to learn more about what's going on and what resources are available to help us in those areas, then it's very, very difficult for us to be able to teach someone else things that we do not know. Why is education so important? And we should still listen to our, our youth. I mean, because we see a lot of drop, kids dropping out, but they don't know just how affect, I mean, how it's gonna be when they get up there in age? Well, because <clears throat> what I see, unfortunately, being in the education system today, you know, they teach you about the certain subjects, the traditional subjects, your English, your math, your history, your science, your social studies, all right? And if I'm coming to school, I'm inside of a classroom, and you're teaching me this information that at this time I may not necessarily deem useful to what I'm currently going through. Inside of my household, I may be experiencing true problems true issues that a normal child, well, I'm not gonna say, say a normal child, but a child of that age may not necessarily is accustomed to experiencing. If I'm an eight year old child, I'm worrying about playing with my turtles. Well, I'm speaking of myself, I like the Ninja Turtles, but I'm playing with my toys, hide and seek, doing what a child does. But in this day and age, a child is exposed to so much inside of the household, in and out of the household, inside of the neighborhood, exposed to so many things that a child is not necessarily accustomed to experiencing at such a young age. So when you're trying to teach me and try to motivate me inside this classroom to learn your information, but when I go home, it's a whole different world. I'm trying to learn how to survive in that world. So currently what you're teaching me in this classroom isn't helping me. I need something that can help me survive in my household or survive in my neighborhood. I need to know how to adapt to my peers. I need to know how to how to grow up in the situation that I'm currently in, how to not be pulled into the environment that I'm surrounded in and to be able to motivate myself and know that it's possible to get out of the current situation I'm in. I need those role models. I need for you to teach me something that I can currently use because at the time I'm not seeing the value in what you're trying to teach me because it's not important to me at the time because necessarily I don't believe that I need it. So that's the issue as far as inside of the education system. Um, they're so stipulated and, and to the point where we hold our, our students accountable to 
an issue that it may not seem as far as important inside the classroom, standardized testing, uh, uh, whatever activities that you're doing inside the classroom. You may necessarily think that I'm not listening to you, that I may not be paying attention, or that I'm disruptive in the classroom, but this is currently how I'm expressing myself to you right. that I need help. I'm not, I'm not adapting to what you're trying to teach me. Teach me another way. Everyone learns differently. I may be an audio learner, but yet you're trying to teach me visual, and it's very difficult for that. So as far as education, we get back to your question, you just have to, it's, it's very difficult for that child to see the value of what they're trying to be taught now and how it will be effective and very valuable to them in their future because they're not looking toward the future. They're focused on here and now. Okay. And, and as educators and as counselors, we have to teach them and inform them about the importance of the future, preparing for the future now at an early age so the road down the line will not be so difficult for you. And that's basically what that is. Now, how, now I know we st you stated about the, the woman can't raise a man or can't teach a man, yes. and that's true, but we do have a growing number of single parents, Indeed. single women raising boys, and now you got the issues now where men are raising the kids single. Right. right. You know, so, but they're also dealing with working. So now they're working not one, but two jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not at home. Indeed. Now the kids are raising each other. Right. So how important is mentoring in that process? It's, it's imperative. It is very important. Because um, as I mentioned, I'm just going to give you my, an example. Um, as you mentioned, a mother, she has a lot of responsibilities, especially a single mom. Correct. You're trying to support a child economically and as well as be that support system for them as a mother. So that's very, very, very difficult for a mother to be able to juggle those two. And I see it all the time. You know, a mom getting pulled away from a job because of the behavior issue that a child may be having within the school. Um, she's also maybe struggling with, with bills. Or, and it's just so many things happening at one time, you don't necessarily know where to turn. So... In addition, especially that child is, is, is showing behavior that you may not necessarily know how to deal with, okay? You tried everything that you could possibly think of, and it's not necessarily being effective to that child, so you're running out of answers. And now I'm, I'm gonna go back to what I stated. I'm not gonna necessarily say that a, a mother can't raise a man uh, or, or raise a child to be an uh, intelligent, effective, uh, contributing man to society. It, it's very rarely as possible. Yeah. It's just difficult, okay? And for that fact is, a mentor bring, being, being brought into that child's life, okay? Another adult, because at times when a child is being raised, he may be seeing his mother going through certain situations and, and it's traditional that he doesn't like that. So I'm gonna take it on my own to do something to help you get out of that situation. I'm a grown man and I still want to help my mother out. So it's only right that a, a young child growing up, he want to make his mom life better. So whatever decision he chooses to make in order to do so, okay, that's on him. But to come back to what you stated, a child, when in fact a mentor comes in his life, he's be able to expose and see someone that can, he be, that he can be able to relate to, all right? That he can be able to communicate with, express his feelings that he may not necessarily have the same relationship with his mom. It's very difficult for, especially a young man, to tell his mom certain things. Right. Um, for one thing, he may be embarrassed. For one thing, she, he may not believe that she'll understand. Um, so once that mentor comes in his life, and be able to establish that rapport, because that's always important. 